glad you could join me again today. We're still talking about self-care and today we're going to talk about competition. And you might think that's a rather strange, strange topic, but I have found that competition becomes a driving force in the lives of so many and many times we don't even recognize it. Have you, um, have you ever bumped into someone who just always has to have a one up in the conversation? You know, they have a bigger story than yours. You say you did this and then they did something a little bit bigger. And if you answer with another, well, I did this, they've got another one. That's competition. Or those who just can't stand the, the limelight, but they have to put others down so that they can keep the focus on themselves. Or have you been faced with that pushy salesperson who just won't let the matter drop, no matter how kindly you try to say, no, thank you. And then there's the other side, the competition that, that we sometimes feel. Have you ever felt your ego wounded by someone beating you to the punch? Have you pushed someone too far to gain the upper hand? Have you bragged and bragged about yourself until you notice people don't want to be around you? You know, this idea of competition is ingrained in our culture. We compete for grades, for places at college, for their sibling rivalry, there's baseball games and sports, and, and then we even enter into the workplace and we see the competition for the job, the recognition, the, the higher pay rise. It just, just keeps going on. And even at home, there's the competition for a bigger house or a new gadget or a bigger car. It, it just pervades every area of our life. Well, the sad thing about competition is that no one, no one really wins. We can get so busy competing against other people that we just forget to look at ourselves. We forget to make ourselves accountable for how we're acting as we strive to get to the top. So today I want to challenge you to readjust your thinking one more time when it comes to self-care. And let's pose many questions to ourselves today. First of all, do you see yourself as competitive? Well, sadly, Many of us are, and sometimes husbands and wives are, comp are in competition against each other. Colleagues compete at work, and even pastors and Christian workers can be guilty of competition, and that's not healthy. What if you turned your idea of competition around and began looking at it in a different way, a way to uh, compete against things that directly involve your self-care? So let's look at these questions. What if your competition was waged against your procrastination? What if you put your efforts into completing or competing against your overvalued ego? What if your battle with unhealthy food was met with your competitive edge? Do you see what I'm saying? Instead of competing against others, why not turn that energy into facing our own issues and challenges? Let me give you a few more. What if you tackled your lack of self-discipline? What if you decided to control your distractions, to turn off that phone, to limit your time on the internet or in front of that TV? How about your bad habits? What if they met with your dogged determination to break them? Because that's what competition is. It's dogged determination. And that negative behavior or thought that you nurture, what if you took up the challenge to defeat it and overcome it? And your self-doubt, what if it was compared with Christ's truth? Who would win that competition? You see, self-care is more than the nice fluffy stuff. And as we saw last week, it is love in action. But it also calls us to the hard stuff, the risk-taking. And it's a matter of competition. It calls us to self-truth. I'm a very competitive person for the most part. I, I love to play games and I play to win. But I have learned in many humiliating situations that competition also has a sting. So I'm going to share with you one of my situations. Our ministry, several years ago, caught the attention of a well-known preacher in America, and he had great sway, access to huge funds, and he was looking for places to invest his efforts. And he chose us. We were shocked because we were not well-known, but he came anyway, and we did our best to meet his criteria, and things were going okay. And then during a trip back to the States, I found myself in a meeting with this man's wife, and beside me stood a friend of many years whom I loved dearly, but pride or competition took over that day and I wanted to be recognized as a part of this new powerful group and my friend was not one of them. So I saddled myself up beside this man's wife and I began talking to her like we were good friends. And then another woman entered the conversation and everything changed. 
I felt like I had totally disappeared. I was totally cut out. I was ignored and I was embarrassed. So I tucked my tail between my legs and I walked back and stood beside my old friend. I'll never forget that experience. Competition and the desire for recognition, pride, or whatever you want to call it, had beaten me and I was humbled. And you know what? I'm glad I was. How unkind and thoughtless had I been. How self-seeking. And I remember that feeling every time I'm tempted now to push myself forward. My competition has turned from competing against others to competing against myself, against my tendencies to pride and my weaknesses. And you know, when we live life as if it's a competition, we set for ourselves, we set ourselves up for these kinds of situations, but we also find it's very draining because they are unrealistic expectations. We really can't meet the things that we are intending to compete against. And the truth of the matter is found in James chapter 4 and verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of God and he shall lift you up. So why do we think we have to promote ourselves? Why do we think that that's even important? You know, God promises to reward hard work and humility. So why don't we resolve ourselves to be content with that and let that be the driving force of our life? Why don't we shift our competitive nature away from showing off to impress others and put it back on pleasing God. Let me lay this challenge before you today. Have a good look at your self-care when it comes to competition. Are you taking care of your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual needs in a God-honoring manner? Are you saying no to things that will eventually harm your life? Are you setting the boundaries that are necessary for success? Are you using the medicine that God gave and allowing Him to wash and make you clean? Do you keep a good balance in self-love and self-care? And does your love exemplify the golden rule? These challenges will be enough to keep you, uh, give you a handle on competition, especially when it comes to competing with others. Set yourself just one goal. As the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now that is a healthy competition. I'll see you next week. Music